One, two, uh, I forgot. Open your eyes. If you ever used an AMD GPU or your Intel computer hardware, you must know the so-called AMD Finewine, where AMD GPUs increasingly improve their performance over time. And I'm just making this video to show you that AMD did brew some more fine wine, this time with The Last of Us Part 1. With the recent drivers from AMD, most specifically the 23.7.1, we got a massive performance uplift in Forza Horizon 5, where RDNA 3 GPUs finally start performing as they should from day one. But well, don't get overly excited as AMD tends to improve their performance as much as they tend to break other things, but we'll talk about that later. I was recently retesting GPUs like the RX 7900 XT, by the way, thanks AMD, and I noticed that the Smart Texas memory performance in The Last of Us Part 1 had vastly improved. Vastly. So I had to retest once again all the higher tier AMD cards like the RX 6800, 6950 XT and 7900 XTX. I also retested the RX 6700 and 6700 XT that oddly had less FPS than on the previous video I made, but at the same time had a more consistent experience for their performance bracket. And I mean performance improvements are always good news, almost as good news as to this sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. So first of all, I'll show you the performance increases for the RDNA 3 GPUs in Forza Horizon 5. At 1080p, before the driver and game fixes, we had the RX 7900 XT performing worse than the RX 6800 and the RX 7900 XTX performing worse than the RX 6950 XT. With the fixes though, the RX 7900 XT got a 67% FPS uplift, with the XTX getting a somehow lower but also good increase of 32%, making it perform 23% faster than the RX 6950 XT, which is still way below what AMD promised, but way better than before. At 1440p, things are more or less the same, with the XTX now getting a bigger uplift of 30%, with both RDNA 3 cards performing considerably well. At 4K, the performance uplifts get slightly smaller as the FPS numbers get reduced and smart access memory doesn't help as much, but nonetheless, the RDNA 3 cards are working much better now, and with further improvements to the drivers and more games supporting it, well, I believe things can get even better. Which is awesome. And now for the star of the show, The Last of Us Part 1. Let's start with improvements versus the previous drivers, and then we go into an overall chart including 14 GPUs. At 1080p, the performance increase with these three GPUs was awesome, and I'm presenting these because the RX 7900 XT had no tests before to compare to the new versions. But as you can see, the difference is outstanding. We're talking about the 22% uplift for the RX 7900 XTX and 24% for both the RX 6950 XT and 6800, with a very noticeable increase in the 1% lows for the RDNA 2 GPUs. At 1440p, the differences can still be seen and felt, with the little RX 6800 going from 77 average FPS to 91, which is a major quality of life improvement if you ask me, and with the RX 7900 XTX having as much 1% lows with the new drivers as it had on average with the previous ones. Insane! As we go into 4K, the differences get smaller as smart access memory seems to help more in high FPS situations, and that's not a case at 4K. Still, the performance increases are there, with the RX 7950 XT now delivering 60 average FPS versus the previous 54, and the RX 7900 XTX pushing almost 90 FPS versus the previous 76. But what does that mean in terms of overall performance? Take in consideration though that the RTX 4080 results are older, but I did retest the RTX 4070 Ti, and with the 4070 Ti, the performance, uh, the performance numbers were exactly the same, so the FPS numbers were exactly the same, in some situations they were even lower. So I guess with the RTX 4080 things will be more or less the same. 
At 1080p we have the RX 6950 XT outmatching the RTX 4080 due to lower CPU overhead in the drivers and smart access memory mitigating it even further, with the RX 7900 series dominating the top positions. Also the RX 6700 XT that currently costs around the same as the RTX 3060 performs 47% faster in this scenario, performing even better than the RTX 3070 when it was performing considerably worse before, so that's a win-win situation. At 1440p things change a bit. The RTX 4080 is now much less restrained by the CPU overhead, performing 13% better than the RX 6950 XT, that performs the same as the RTX 4070 Ti, but is still behind the RX 7900 XT, that is a much cheaper card. The RTX 3070 is also matching the RX 6700 XT now due to having more raw power and the Intel Arc A770 is still the worst performer of all these cards, even with cards such as the RX 7600 in the mix. At 4K the lower tier Nvidia cards start getting advantage over the MD ones, but we're talking about values under 30 average FPS, with the RX 6800 still being a little behind the RTX 4070, but with the RX 6950 XT beating the RTX 4070 Ti. The RTX 4080 though shows its true power now being finally faster than the RX 7900 XT, but at the same time still being slower than the RX 7900 XTX by around 14%. It's important to note that the RX 7900 XTX was slower than the RTX 4080 at all resolutions before the update, as can be seen in the video passing right now in the screen, while it is now faster in all of them. Definitely a worthy update. One thing that annoyed me before was that The Last of Us was made for PlayStation that uses AMD hardware, specifically for PS5 for example that uses a specific RDNA 2 hybrid GPU. So it made no sense that Nvidia GPUs were performing better than their AMD counterparts. But now we know that it was because before, smart access memory wasn't doing its job properly. As for the Adrenaline 23.7.1 drivers, they fixed lots of things, but at the same time, they broke some others. With some GPUs performing slightly worse than with the previous drivers, with Modern Warfare 2 having frame pacing issues, although I think that's because of the game update since I reverted to the previous 23.5.1 drivers and the issue remains, Rocket League getting broken for some people, and one thing that I noticed is that after the specific 23.5.1 drivers for the RX 7600, in God of War the shader cache now loads in the first time you run the game, meaning that the game will stutter when loading new things for the first time, while before it would load them while in the menu, leading to butter smooth experience in the very first run. Well, I guess we have to live with it, as all brands have their issues. As for the results once again I would like to have included the RTX 4090 for example but sadly I don't own one. I actually asked the MSI if they were kind enough to resend or send once again the RTX 4080 to retest in some games like for example once again The Last of Us, Hogwarts Legacy and so on uh, and maybe maybe if possible we have the I have the possibility of testing the RTX 4090 if they actually send one. Who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky. And well guys, that's all for today's video. It seems that AMD is finally fixing their performance, finally fixing their shit uh, with some games. They're, in the meanwhile, they're breaking other things, of course, but they're fixing the most important things right now, uh, or they're trying to at least. Finally, Forza Horizon 5 performance is, is fixed because it was a massive deal breaker for RDNA 3 G GPU users because uh, the RDNA 3 GPUs were actually performing worse than the previous generation and that makes absolutely no sense. And The Last of Us, of course, got a massive performance uplift as well with smart access memory as it makes sense because consoles also use a version of smart access memory. So it makes sense that on computers, smart access memory does deliver better performance as well. Something that did not happen before but now does with The Last of Us Part 1. The same thing happened before like for example with Horizon Zero Dawn that had no no performance uplifts but after a driver update and a game update the performance uplifts were there and were massive as well. Same for The Last of Us Part 1. Very nice. And well guys that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and as always leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the results. See you in the next video, guys. Cheers.